can kids be psychopaths? While the term psychopath often evokes images of cold-blooded adult criminals, research suggests that the seeds of psychopathy can be sown in early childhood. One indication of psychopathic tendencies in children is the presence of callous and unemotional traits, characterized by a lack of empathy, remorse, and shallow emotions. When combined with aggressive behavior and a propensity for manipulation, these traits can be a warning sign for a potentially troubled future. One of the most infamous cases that raises this question is the brutal murder of James Bulger, a two-year-old boy from Liverpool, England. On February 12, 1993, James was abducted from a shopping mall by two 10-year-old boys, John Venables and Robert Thompson. What followed was a heinous crime that would shock the nation and raise fundamental questions about the nature of childhood, morality, and the capacity for evil. James Patrick Bulger was born on March 16, 1990 in Kirkby, Merseyside, England. He was the son of Denise Bulger and Ralph Bulger. James had two younger brothers, James Michael Bulger and Thomas Bulger, who were born after his death. On February 12, 1993, two 10 year old boys, Robert Thompson and John Venables, were observed casually watching and selecting children as potential targets at the New Strand Shopping Center in Boodle, Merseyside. The boys, who regularly played truant from their local primary school, spent the day shoplifting various items, including sweets, batteries, a troll doll, and a can of blue humbrol modeling paint. It was later revealed that they were planning to abduct a child, lead him to the busy road alongside the shopping center, and push him into the oncoming traffic. That same afternoon, two-year-old James Patrick Bulger, from Kirkby, went with his mother, Denise, to the New Strand Shopping Center. While inside the AR Times Butcher's shop on the lower floor of the center at around 1540, Denise, who had let go of her son's hand to pay for her shopping, realized that her son was missing. Thompson and Venables had approached Bulger, took him by the hand, and led him out of the shopping center. The moment was caught on CCTV at 1542. Thompson and Venables took Bulger to the Leeds and Liverpool Canal, around a quarter mile, 400 meters, from the New Strand shopping center, where they dropped him on his head, and he suffered injuries to his face. An eyewitness said that when he saw Bulger at the canal, the boy was crying his eyes out. The boys went on a two plus a half mile, four kilometer, walk across Liverpool. They were seen by around 38 people, but most bystanders did nothing to intervene. Two people challenged Thompson and Venables, but they either claimed that Bulger was their brother, or that he was lost, and that they were taking him to a police station. At one point, the boys took Bulger into a pet shop, from which they were ejected. Eventually, the boys arrived in Walton, near Walton Lane Police Station. They hesitated, then led Bulger up a steep bank to a railway line near the former Walton and Anfield Railway Station, close to Walton Park Cemetery. One of the boys threw the blue paint that they had shoplifted earlier into Bulger's left eye. They kicked him, stamped on him, and threw bricks and stones at him. They placed batteries in Bulger's mouth and may have inserted some into his anus, although none were found there. Finally, the boys dropped a 10 kilograms, 22 pounds, railway fish plate on Bulger's head. He sustained 10 skull fractures as a result of the bar striking his head. Pathologist Alan Williams stated that Bulger suffered so many injuries, 42 in total, that none could be identified as the fatal blow. Thompson and Venables laid Bulger across the railway tracks and weighted his head down with rubble, hoping that a train would hit him and his death would be ruled an accident. After they left the scene, his body was cut in half by a train. A forensic pathologist testified that Bulger died before he was struck by the train. The police quickly found low-resolution video images of Bulger's abduction from the New Strand shopping center by two unidentified boys. The breakthrough came when a woman, upon seeing slightly enhanced images of the two boys on national television, recognized Venables and remembered seeing him playing truant with Thompson in the Boodle area that day. 
she contacted the police and the boys were arrested. The fact that the suspects were so young came as a profound shock to the investigating officers headed by Detective Superintendent Albert Kirby of Merseyside Police. Early press reports and police statements had referred to Bulger being seen with two youths, suggesting that the killers were teenagers, as the ages of the boys were difficult to ascertain from the low-quality images captured by the CCTV footage. However, as the investigation progressed, it became clear that the perpetrators were in fact two 10-year-old boys, Robert Thompson and John Venables, making them the youngest convicted murderers in modern British history. Forensic tests conducted by the police confirmed that both boys had the same distinctive blue paint on their clothing as that found on Bulger's body. Furthermore, both Thompson and Venables had traces of Bulger's blood on their shoes. The blood on Thompson's shoe was matched to Bulger through DNA tests. A pattern of bruising on Bulger's right cheek was found to match the features of the upper part of a shoe worn by Thompson, while a paint mark in the toe cap of one of Venables' shoes indicated that he must have used some force when he kicked Bulger. The brutality of the attack was further evidenced by the fact that Bulger sustained a total of 42 injuries, with 10 skull fractures caused by the 10 kilograms, 22 pounds, railway fish plate dropped on his head. Pathologist Alan Williams stated that none of the individual injuries could be identified as the fatal blow, highlighting the sustained and vicious nature of the assault. In a chilling detail, Thompson is said to have asked the police whether Bulger had been taken to the hospital to get him alive again, suggesting a complete lack of remorse and understanding of the gravity of their actions. The boy's young age and the shocking nature of their crime led to an outpouring of public grief and anger, with the railway embankment where Bulger's body was discovered becoming a makeshift memorial, adorned with hundreds of bunches of flowers. Thompson and Venables were each charged with the murder of James Bulger on February 20th, 1993, and appeared at South Sefton Youth Court on February 22nd, 1993, where they were remanded in custody to await trial. In the aftermath of their arrest, and throughout the media accounts of their trial, the boys were referred to as Child A uh, Thompson and Child B Venables in an effort to protect their identities. Awaiting trial, they were held in the secure units where they would eventually be sentenced to be detained at Her Majesty's pleasure, a form of indeterminate sentence for young offenders in the UK. Approximately 500 protesters gathered at the magistrate's court in the metropolitan borough of Sefton during the initial court appearances of the boys, Robert Thompson and John Venables. The intense public outrage and emotional turmoil surrounding the case led to the parents of the accused being relocated to different parts of the country and provided with new identities due to death threats from vigilantes. The full trial commenced at Sessions House in Preston on November 1st, 1993, conducted as an adult trial with the accused seated in the dock away from their parents, surrounded by legal officials in formal regalia. Thompson and Venables denied the charges of murder, abduction, and attempted abduction. The latter charge stemmed from an incident earlier on the day of James Bulger's death, when the boys had tried to lead away another two-year-old boy, but were thwarted by the child's vigilant mother. During the trial, Thompson and Venables were seated on raised chairs within view of the court, designed for adults, accompanied by social workers and guards. Despite being separated from their families, they were in close proximity when their relatives attended the proceedings. Media reports scrutinized the demeanor of the defendants, a factor that would later draw criticism from the European Court of Human Rights in 1999 for not ensuring a fair trial by holding it in public in an adult court. Lead prosecution counsel Richard Henriquez successfully challenged the principle of Dolly Incapax, asserting that Thompson and Venables were capable of understanding the gravity of their actions due to their mischievous discretion. Expert testimonies from child psychiatrist Eileen Vizard and forensic psychiatrist Susan Bailey highlighted the boys' awareness of right and wrong, with Thompson exhibiting signs of post-traumatic stress disorder following the attack on Bulger. Throughout the trial, Thompson and Venables remained silent, 
with the case against them relying heavily on over 20 hours of tape-recorded police interviews played in court. Thompson was portrayed as taking the lead in the abduction, while Venables was described as initiating the idea of taking Bulger to the railway line. Venables recounted how Bulger seemed to trust him during the journey to the murder scene. The prosecution presented various exhibits, including a box of bricks, a blood-stained stone, Bulger's underpants, and the iron bar used in the crime. At the age of 11, Thompson and Venables were found guilty of Bulger's murder on November 24, 1993, making them the youngest convicted murderers of the 20th century. The presiding judge, Mr. Justice Moreland, condemned their actions as unparalleled evil and barbarity, sentencing them to be detained at Her Majesty's pleasure with a recommendation for an extended period of custody. The judge lifted reporting restrictions at the trial's conclusion, allowing the killer's names to be disclosed to facilitate public discourse on crimes committed by young children. Following their release in 2001 at the age of 18, both Thompson and Venables were provided with new identities to protect their safety and facilitate their rehabilitation. However, their lives after release were marked by further criminal behavior. Venables, in particular, faced legal issues, including arrests for possessing indecent images of children in 2010 and 2017. Despite being refused parole in 2020, on the other hand, Thompson has not reoffended since his release and has maintained a low profile under an injunction that protects his new identity globally, making any attempt to search for his address punishable by imprisonment. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more true crime documentaries.